اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم جی آیا نو پخیر آغلے نی ہاو چونشم میں وشم لے اوہائی گنزائیوز گیوٹر موگن اولا بویو پریویت کیفہ حال حال شمہ چطورے اہلا و سال مرحبا بونا موچو گراسیا سوابیا بلی کرے آیا خوش گیال دے نایو سایو خوی امورا چی بتو چی حال جود کالی میرا خیر و تان and a very warm welcome to everybody who's tuned into PTV World and a watching world this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, first things first, Jumma Mubarak, thank you so much for tuning into PTV World. I happen to be Shazad Asan Khan and today, you know, filling Hajar Asati's shoes will be Ms. Sadaf Ali Khan. Hello Sadaf, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you doing today? Wa Alaikum Assalam Shazad, it's uh, been a pleasure that I'm here, I'm feeling very excited. And uh, I think as that's per, great. You know, I think everybody uh, needs to look forward to being excited early in the morning and that's the sole motive of us being here. And Sadaf, to kind of get started with the show, you know, just a couple of days ago, we actually kind of shared news and the news was about Mount Fuji in Japan. If you know, you know, I think that's the most amazing tourist attraction. And we said that it broke a 130-year record because there was no snowfall this time around. And we you know, kind of affiliated it with climate change. But ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to correct this one as well because Japan's Mount Fuji finally got some snow cover more than a month after it did last year, setting a record for the latest snowfall in 130 years. The Kofu Weather Station said its staff had visually confirmed some snow near the 3,776 meter summit of the country's tallest volcano. The first snowfall on Mount Fuji is defined as when all or part of the mountain is covered with snow, a white looking solid precipitation and can be viewed from the Kofi Observatory for the first time after summer. Wow, finally. Exactly. See, this is very exciting, base, right? Shahzad. Snowfall is love. Whenever you see snowfall, snowfall that's, that's wonderful. I have another exciting news. Yeah, that is one? from Saudi Arabia, where the Saudi, Saudi Arabian desert turned into winter wonderland after first okay. snowfall, which is another amazing yet very exciting news. Uh, for the first time ever, snowfall has transformed the Al Jaf region of Saudi Arabia into a winter wonderland, uh, where heavy rains and hail proceeded with snowfall fall reviving waterways and valleys. The unusual weather pattern also affected the UAE with rainfall and thunderstorms reported. And this historic event adds to Saudi Arabia's climate record, making a significant shift in the region's weather patterns. Wow. I mean, uh, I don't know if Saudi Arabia was ready for such snowfalls and, uh, you know, probably rain as well. So I think that for people who reside in Saudi Arabia, well, congratulations to you that the weather has taken a turn. And, you know, let's be all joyful about it and you know to my uh, surprise when i went for uh, umrah this year around as well somebody came up and showed me pictures of different parts of saudi arabia where they have mountains just like murray and the weather mm. was the, was like that as well but in addition to this i think i would want to come down to where you know the world record for peeling pineapples it stands with somebody else. Imagine this gentleman peeling a pineapple in 17.85 seconds. So here's another world record for you. A man named Rich Ellenson in California holds the record for being the fastest in peeling and slicing a pineapple. Rich sliced and diced a pineapple in 17.85 seconds, establishing a new world record in his name. Well, I don't know. Sadaf, uh, uh, I mean, I've always tried when I'm on the uh, kitchen tabletop. You know, I always try to kind You're of slice You're good in kitchen? It. Are you I don't good know in if kitchen? I'm good in kitchen or not, but I can make chicken kadai, I can make anda, you know, egg probably, wow. you know, fry it. Or you can make set a, a record as well. I don't know for making the <laughs> we can try that. Kadai, probably. Yeah. But, you know, in addition to this, ladies and gentlemen, I think let's come down to where, how we are drifting away from books. I think that's something that we would certainly want to touch upon. And, you know, there are organizations, there are people who are actually putting in a lot of effort to make sure that the literature stays alive, that the bookshelf actually increases for all of those which are out there as well which is why i think it's a great news for all of those islamabad the rawalpindi people out there or the people around islamabad the rawalpindi because islamabad literature festival ladies and gentlemen has come to f9 park islamabad is kick starting today and will be here till the uh, sunday and uh, while we are at it i think there are a couple of questions that i would like to ask we have a worthy guest over here you know, and uh, representing that organization which actually initiated, it's going to be the third, tenth edition of the Istanbul Literature Festival. We're very lucky that we'll be joined by the marketing director, Oxford University Press, Mr. Khuram Qureshi. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, good morning, how are you? Assalamu Alaikum and thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's my pleasure to represent Oxford University Press today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you over here. So first things first, 
you know, let our audiences know what's going to happen in the Islamabad Literature Festival. Why did you actually have this idea, the Oxford Press, if you are to kind of talk about it, 10 years down the line, where do we stand? Okay, so Oxford University Press is, uh, this is the 10th milestone year of the Islamabad Literature Festival. Um, I think we have uh, two and a half exciting days for Islamabad, Islamabad residents yeah. uh, in store starting this afternoon. And there will, there will be book launches, there will be authors, there will be mushairas, there will be performances and a movie screening. So a very exciting array of cultural, literary offerings uh, for the residents of Islamabad. Uh, it's in very centrally located F9 Park, yep. the Gandhara Gate Club. Gate number four, right? Gate number four. And I would really encourage people to, uh, to come and, and, and enjoy. Um, it's free of cost and it's a very exciting opportunity. Okay, if we uh, talk about the book culture, the book culture in general, throughout the world since social media has taken over. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, telephones, we have uh, mobile phones, we have laptops, a lot of gadgets that we have. Sure. Uh, the book culture, in short, is dying. Uh, th they're the philosophers, the writers, they actually shape the mindset of a society. They're very Absolutely. important for a society. Uh, how do you see this uh, in general? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, that's a very ex interesting question that you're raising. Um, Yes, uh, the printed word uh, has been facing challenges. You know, uh, print publications, uh, weeklies, monthlies, and even newspapers are shifting to digital. Uh, but the published word remains uh, as important. Oxford University Press is moving to digital learning, which is a blend of the printed word and the uh, digital yeah. uh, learning, even in classrooms. So I think the world is changing, uh, audiences are changing. Uh, we want to encourage thinking, thought process, debate and readership, whether it's on, on paper or on a screen. But the yeah. smell of books, we, we, we grew up in that environment, <laughs> like that, that touch anyway. of books. <laughs> I, I am a reader and I really love reading books. So you know, like that yeah. thing, that's, that's fading away somehow. So I think with time everything changes, yeah. Yeah. right? And um, you you went from the oral tradition to the paper, tradition of paper, yeah. which many generations like yours and mine um, and generations of readers have gone, uh, grown up um, with that love. Uh, and now the, the newer generation is switching to screens. Yep. But I think uh, at Oxford University Press, whether we hold the Islamabad Literature Festival or the Karachi Literature Festival, our desire is to keep that culture of thinking, of, of debate, of learning, of literature alive. Thank you so much for saying that because it opens up a new Pandora box. Now imagine, it's for not sure. literally a Pandora box, but that's the kind of conversation because imagine I'm going to give credit to Oxford Printing Press over here and it's because of the fact that they're not saying that we just want you to read books. What mm. they're saying is that we want to change the culture where people keep on reading, maybe from the book, maybe from a digital device, to keep on changing their mindsets, to keep on evolving. That's great. So, you know, for Oxford Printing Press to kind of come up with an idea that we're going to have a literature festival yeah. where we're not just saying that read books. All we're saying is that read. I think read, that's something which matters. Read. So how did you come up with this idea? Do you think that it's the evolution of the entire process and being in line with digitalization? Look, uh, our primary, the primary business of Oxford University Press globally is, is textbooks, yeah. you know. So, uh, learning is changing. Uh, I'm new to publishing, yeah. and, um, but I have children. It's and you know, business, uh, uh, it's a tough business, yeah, it's yeah. a tough business. But in the classrooms of today, globally, uh, learning has evolved from when I was in a classroom, or even you, you two were in classrooms. And learning uh, has to adapt to the child. Yeah. And the child is, is now far, far more digital than he was 20 years True. back. Mm. And COVID-19 uh, COVID really accelerated that adoption process. Mm, exactly. So even in the, in the most basic schools of this country, learning is now switching from just paper to a more a blend, what we like to call blended. Exactly, and, and for me uh, it has always been very visual as well. You know, so if I look at things, you know, I would learn sure. very quickly as well. Mm -hmm. While we're at it, 
let's discuss the theme as well you know because it says sustainability words change mindset they yes, do yes. and it will open up a new conversation so of first course. let's speak about the uh, theme this year around why sustainability words change mindsets i think this country is one of the worst affected by climate change yep uh, and for us climate change whether it's real or a myth is no longer a debate yeah. as mm. pakistanis mm. we've suffered exactly. from climate disasters year after year mm. and uh, the sad thing is that pakistan is one of the s smallest contributors towards global yeah. climate change mm. we feel that highlighting the issue of sustainability and using words to change mindsets and then eventually practices amongst the people of pakistan will help us cope with the climate disaster that we are that is staring yeah. us in the and face and how are you changing those practices so look um, at our level it's debate and awareness yep. yeah uh, events like the islamabad literature festival which the oup oxford university press is hosting um, offer a platform for discussion debate and awareness hmm. and any change i'm a marketer um, uh, when we when we look to change behavior and mindsets yeah. it starts with awareness True. and once you have awareness then you know the the it ladders up to interest mm. and desire and then action True. and mm. that's the model of yeah. uh, of uh, fostering change mm. and i think uh, events like uh, ilf where young people interact with experts in the fields um and of sustainability and climate change uh, mm. they will uh, go back and even if we can plant a seed in a few minds i think our objective is is achieved hmm. we have seen islamabad literature festival we have seen karachi literature festival uh, are you planning to expand it to different cities where you know like lahore multan faisalabad different cities in pakistan and and, uh, and how do both these well? uh, festivals actually kind of connect people or bridge people from Istanbul to Karachi and Karachi to Islam because I do remember that Karachi Literature Festival was the first one which took place. Yes, yes, we've had 15 Karachi Literature Festivals Ashallah. and inshallah uh, in February we'll have the the 16th. Uh uh look it would be wonderful if we could manage to do one in every major city of the country. Hmm. Um we have one in Lahore uh, which which is not uh, done by the Oxford University Press but Karachi and Islamabad are by our uh, sort o of uh, Oxford, Oxford press, University yes. press events um uh, we would love to have them in every major city of the mm. country we would love to foster a culture of learning uh, appreciation of literature a culture of debate because these forums the most interesting conversations happen and each city has its own flavor Islamabad is a city of bureaucrats is a city of of foreign uh, diplomats um uh, it's the political uh, center yeah. uh, nerve center it's of the this heart country. of pakistan anyways uh, yes. and and uh, it's also at the foothill of the margala uh, margala hills so um there are regional languages so so it 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 has its own unique flavor True. you know uh, we have discussion on pashto literature we have a punjabi wow. muash uh, 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 mushaira uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is it is one of our more um, most popular events by yeah. the way mm. uh, and uh, so there's a celebration of local culture local language um, my personal favorite is is this uh, young dentist from peshawar and he doesn't write books but he is capturing the oral tradition yeah. the folklore and mythology That's of amazing. pakistan and he's going to be talking about that oh. so wow. uh, mm. he has an instagram account by Ho called his story his mm. name is huzaifa and if uh, any of you listeners are planning to come i'd really encourage you to catch that session i think that that's mm. great and you know in addition to this i think it opens up more avenues and i have more respect for oxford university press for making sure that it's not just the words merely written in form of literature but it there's more visual to it as well and that it actually includes in what we call literature as well while we are at it you know let's let's talk about some key aspects of the sambal literature festival which will actually generate a lot of interest amongst the people as well we've spoken about the theme let's speak about the keynote speakers what's going to happen are you going to offer a cup of tea as well while somebody <laughs> wants to read a book there you know let's go let, let's go beyond that yes okay please. for sure so our keynote speaker uh, maliha lodi uh, our celebrated ambassador yep um we have zera naga one of the greatest poets of the, uh, this country is produced 
and we have a, a diplomat called uh, Jane Marriott. Uh, so those are our keynote speakers. Uh, we have um, amongst the major attractions, there's a performance uh, on diversity. Wow. Uh, there is a movie screening, Om Royar. Wow. And uh, there is a it's Sufi offering night. offering a lot uh, yeah. of, lot of uh, excited stuff. Yeah, yeah, actually, I mean, look, we just don't uh, offer authors and book signings. Mm. We want uh, it to be a celebration of culture. Mm. And like I said, diversity, celebrate the diversity of this land. Mm. We, we have so many languages in this country. We have so many unique cultures. Um, and we have so much to offer the world. And uh, we want to showcase, curate, celebrate Pakistan in its in its myriad of facets yeah, uh, yeah uh, we're talking about diversity cultures if we talk about uh, uh, such things these events do they help in connecting globally people across the world are mm -hmm. these fruitful beneficial what do you think about it look um, this uh, festivals like the ILF and KLF hosted by the Oxford University Press mm -hmm. uh, serve as a conduit uh, between global authors yeah. and Pakistani authors. Hmm. So it's a, it's a forum. We, we have authors from all over the world attending these uh, festivals. And I think this is, this is where it actually helps, you know, for all the authors to come together, the audiences to come together as well. But thank you so much, sir, for being yep. with us. Lovely to be in conversation with you and for everybody who's out there, people who reside in Islamabad, Rawal Pindi, or cities around, you're in for a treat. The Islamabad Literature Festival is kick-starting today in the evening. It will be on from Friday, Saturday till Sunday. Please make sure that you go out there and be in love with the, what the Islamabad Literature Festival holds for you. We're heading out towards a short break. When you come back, we have something really uh, important to talk about in aspects of mental health. You know, so please stay tuned because nobody so far has differentiated in between mental illnesses and then psychiatric disorders or mental health itself. Hmm. What's the difference in between? Let's gauge we'll that We'll talk out today. more about it. So we'll be right back. Good stay morning. Tuned. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Before heading out towards a short break, we did speak about the Samba Literature Festival and how important it is for all of us to kind of be a part of this uh, economic journey because imagine that for every author to come to, uh, from different parts of the world, be here, bridge these gaps, we'll actually have more audiences and more people and more readers. But while we we're at it and while we we're talking about that we really need to read books or probably just read from anywhere else, I think there's another important aspect and that is to remember our heroes, which is why Sadaf, what do you have for us? I have another news for you, which is about the death anniversary of John Elia being remembered today. Uh, a renowned poet who doesn't know him, everybody knows his name. We have been reading his poetry, uh, the 22nd death anniversary of renowned poet, philosopher, biographer and scholar John Elia is being observed today. His real name was Sayyid Hussain Septe Asghar Nakwi. He was born in Amroha, Uttar Pradesh in 1931 and later migrated to Pakistan in 1957 and he settled in Karachi. John Elia's unique writing style fascinates the readers and he will always be remembered for his greatest services to the Urdu language. His famous poetry collections include uh, Shayad, Yani, Guman, Lekin, Ramuz and Goya. Exactly, and I think on this occasion it's really important that we, you know, share um, a, a bit of his poetry as well. So, Ada Matlab, Niga Matlab, Zuba Matlab, Bea Matlab, Bina Matlab, Kaha Jaun, Jaha Jaun, Vaha Matlab. I think that, that certainly concludes it as well. But moving on, ladies and gentlemen, obviously, you know, we are talking about, you know, Pakistan uh, visiting Australia. The second One Day International is on in Adelaide Oval. And imagine that Pakistan won the toss and they wanted to ball first. And that was something which I didn't really take as a very welcoming note. But, you know, imagine that the kind of wickets that they have taken early on because of the moisture in the wicket is something which might contribute. Now, imagine that majority of their senior players won't be playing the last one day international. So this is an opportunity for the new skipper, Mohammed Rizwan, to kind of seize victory over here against them today, restrict them into a lower total and make sure that they can chase it. Because imagine that out of six, four times, 
chasing teams have actually won in Adelaide over in recent times. Yes, what do you have next? I think we are going to move on towards how, you know, fresh air is actually being sold in cans. I mean, earlier, yeah. you know, with the passage of time, we were able to kind of cope up with the uh, mission of having, you know, a water bottle. You know, because water was free and we never thought that it's going to become a commodity. But recently now it is. But with now you can purchase and air as well. But imagine fresh air. I think wow. we really need these cans in Rawalpindi or Lahore. Things are changing, Shahzad. On, on the rise. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But not just that. I think, imagine capturing the essence of breathtaking destination in a can. At least Lake Como has bottled its picturesque air. <laughs> I don't know how, what a picturesque air is. And is selling it as a unique souvenir. Each can contains 400 milliliter of authentic atmosphere. Perfect for those who want to hmm. relive their travels. I know, you know, it's just more of a smell that you can actually feel, okay, you know, I yeah. was there. Bring it on for your family. I don't know what people are doing these days. But why you can we just open it? up the can and then you can just I mean, it speaks volumes in. about your mental health. Exactly. You want the can <laughs> for fresh air. You know, but while we are at it and we spoke about it, that we certainly want to differentiate today about in between, you know, your mental illnesses and your psychiatric disorders. Because most of the times what I have seen is that even me over here doing this show for so long, I never was able to differentiate because I thought that mental illnesses will eventually lead you towards a psychiatric disorder. Is that true? You know, is that the right way to put it? Or can you directly be subjected to a psychiatric disorder because of any trauma in your life? Not just that, there'll be obviously a conference happening, you know, towards the end of November, which I believe is of great importance to speak about mental health and Pakistan will be hosting it. Then imagine that speaking, somebody will be speaking over here on the 25th of November about the adolescent mental health. And I think that's something that we really need to talk about. I'm mm. really very lucky and I'm humble that this amazing gentleman has taken out time for us because I don't know, I think you cannot even book an appointment with him because he's too busy. He's a recipient of Sitara Imtiaz, he's the recipient of Lifetime Achievement Awards. He's been uh, he's published 70 or more publications, written 14 or more books. I mean, he's the one who actually created this facility over here. He was the commandant then as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are really lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody uh, and nobody else certainly cannot can get better than this over here to be honest he happens to be the chairman of the healing triad pakistan professor dr wadad hussain rana assalamu alaikum sir good morning assalam. very good morning sir thank good you so you. much for joining us my pleasure wonderful to have you over here yes certainly you know uh, because half of the time whenever people call me ke yaar doctor saab se appointment lete hain mujhe nahi mil rahi tab tumhe kaise leke do but sir while we are at it i think it's a wonderful question which you gave the idea originally i need to give credit where it's due so mental health psychiatric disorders does it lead to each other uh, it can happen individually how do we differentiate in between these two well thank you very much for having me over at my association with this uh, particular show goes back to from the day of its inception as you would years. recall yeah long, long long association i've been here several times but thank you very much for yes, bringing in a bit of nostalgia in my life mm -hmm. uh, one thing that has been constant is you here uh, on this show from its inception. Mental health, um, I think, is a, is a huge concept. Okay. L like health is a far bigger concept than disease. True. Similarly, mental health is a bigger concept than mental illness or psychiatric disorder. Yeah. Mental health is uh, more of a state of well-being, you know, where you constantly feel that you are content. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you're feeling easy, comfortable, at ease with yourself. Um, you know, you smiling <laughs> and and you look at life and say life is worth living hmm. so you, you're personally content with what is going on in life and that's hmm. good mental health you also feel responsible that you are not um, you know you're not all by yourself yeah. uh, I'm a social animal I have a responsibility towards my family towards my spouse my kids my neighbors my hmm. community yeah see and that's a good mental health at the same time, you want to constantly contribute towards the economic cycle. Yes. Mm. So uh, not only that you are economically emancipated, but you are also constantly providing opportunities to other people to enhance their economic emancipation. Or, or the mm. other way around. The, we want the economic cycle to kind of contribute to our that, economic that's, status. That's not very <laughs> mentally healthy. <laughs> that's kind of interrelated and directly yeah. proportional but, to each other. But I think the, the best part about mental health is that it brings the best out of a human being. Right. Mm. You know, so here is this 
you know, you, you like uh, the treasures are inside you like Balochistan has all those treasures. Mm. And mental health is an excavation into the best part of me to mm. come out. Yeah. Mm. How lucky is a person who can excavate all the way in and bring out the endowments that nature gave yeah. to come out of, and uh, be at display and for the entire world to benefit from it. But That's mental health. Yeah. Mm. But you know, if I do not really look after my mental health, there are several risk factors. If okay. I do not look after them, gradually, slowly but surely, mm. I will slide down. And as I slide down, the next station is a degree of distress mm. in which I would be symptomatic, my sleep is not going to be right, I will not enjoy that kind of personal contentment, happiness, joy, mm. social responsibility, transiently though. Okay. But most days of the week, if I start to get into that state, my next station is psychiatric disorders, okay. which includes conditions like depression being the commonest, yeah. uh, anxieties, phobias, obsessive compulsive disorders, schizophrenia, psychosis, bipolar disorders, and so on and so forth, drug abuse included. Yeah. So mm. that's the realm where I can hopefully never go, should never go, and therefore stay in this realm of mental health, mm. which is a treasure that mm. we all must Indeed. benefit mm. from. Uh, Dr. Saab, yeah. if, yeah. we, if we talk about infant health, uh, infant's mental health in particular, yeah. uh, how early do we start, uh, do we need to start taking measures to, uh, you know, like address the mental health of a child? Because, uh, you know, like I, uh, from a layman's perspective, I have heard things that uh, when a child is inside his or her mother's womb, uh, they're getting affected by their mother's traumas uh, from everything which the mother is, is experiencing and how she's feeling. So how, how do you describe this? Well, first of all, congratulations that you've thought of infant mental health. Not many people actually think of uh, uh, relationship of infants with mental health. I, have a, I come from a small village in Sahiwal. And as a villager, as a, an agriculturalist, when mm. I go there, I enjoy, uh, for example, this time of the year, farmers are preparing their fields to sow seeds of wheat. Mm. And they're looking after this land like, you know, yeah. never before, True. you know. They're plowing it, they're, you know, putting in fertilizers, fertilizer, they're, yeah, they're really preparing. Lao. And if you stop one of these farmers and say, Aap kya kare? he would say, I have to sow the seed of wheat. I must prepare this land properly, otherwise it is not going to give the best yield. True. Mm. Now if you can do that for wheat, yeah. why not for a baby? Yeah, that's mm. So actually the mental health phenomenon uh, starts before even mm. the conception. Yeah. Mm. It's the preparation of the mother that the couple decide to learn the art and science of bringing the greatest gift to this world True. by Al Almighty, a human mm. being. So they need to prepare themselves like the farmer prepares the field. Mm. And then of course, once they conceive through a phenomenon of mutual love and respect, mm. you know, in an institutionalized way, formally, you know, mm. and they treasure the possibility of having a baby. Mm. That is the first step actually. Yeah. And then and during the stage in the womb that, in, uh, that the fetus is, there are circumstances and situations, as you very rightly pointed out, that can serve as huge um, challenges for the growing uh, infant. Really? The, the mental health of the mother, the degree of care and concern and compassion, understanding and empathy that mm. a mother who's, who's having this fetus in her womb receives is directly proportional to the quality of the blueprint of mental health that wow. is being prepared. Mm. But uh, sometimes in our society, we actually try to glorify Madi Jutti. We're like, that is a form of love. We actually try to say that, no, like this is something. I think it's kabhi kabhi bhool jate. We're like, this is a form of love, but that these things, they affect the, uh, the he mental health of a child. Yes. You see, uh, when you frown on somebody who, uh, who you love, that frown carries a degree of compassion and concern. It comes out of that love. Mm. But when that same frown comes out of some kind of a rejection, a child can separate the two. Yeah. Mm. So the, that frown of the mother or that jutti of the mother, mm. I have had my due share of it. <laughs> yeah. I can assure you. I think you, we all had. You know, but, but I knew somehow that it is coming out of that sheer love mm. and concern that she has of my 
you know, years well to be, come. And yes. she's, you know, she's like that Mali, you know, who's pruning, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, the, the plant with all the love and affection that if I prune, the stem is going to become stronger. Mm. The bud is going to next time bring more fruition. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for yeah. saying that. So I think points to take away from here onwards is that, you know, that God forbid, if you're thinking that you're getting disturbed, you certainly need to go, you know, see a doctor for yourselves. Unfortunately, if it moves you to another realm, I think it will be a difficult journey back home, which I have seen with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Number two, you know, infant, obviously mental health. We, we have spoken about it. It's for the very first time that we have spoken about it. Very quickly, sir, one last thing, and that is, if, God forbid, we do see that somebody kind of is challenged with mental health issues and all of a sudden they're frowning, they're shouting, they do a lot of things which certainly, and you over here being clueless, what should we say to that person which can calm them down? Well, at uh, least in that just, just to conclude on infant mm. mental yeah. health, we are having an infant mental health conference next 25th. spring, yes. uh, um, in spring 2025, yep. psychiatric conference coming up in uh, just a two weeks time yep. from uh, on today November. yeah in Islamabad uh, and uh, more than what should you do when somebody's mental health is challenged yeah. I think the first thing that needs to be done is to first of all understand that mental health issues are at par with physical health issues yeah. we tend to see mental health issues as a weakness yeah you mm. know as a ye kamzor hai ye hai drama kar raha hai yeah. You know, mm. which is so unfortunate. Please start to take mental health issues at par, at least with heart health issues, Alhamdulillah. if mm. not anything mm. else. You know, you cannot say that to, to somebody who's got a heart. If you have got a brain, yeah. which is sometimes a question mark, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it can go wrong. Yeah. So please accept that. Take this individual gladly in your arms and say, let us go and see somebody. Let us go. And you see, when you talk of an organ of the body, yes, you want to say, go and see a heart yeah. uh, mm. doctor. Here, say, let us go and see and a see psychiatrist. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Sa, for your time, you know, for your worthy words, for your pearls of wisdom as well, and for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen. That's the key advice for free on PT World, World this morning. Please take it, and inshallah, you will have a healthier mental health and a healthier self as well. With that, we're actually heading out towards a short break. Just very quickly, rich tribute to Madam Shazia Sikandar because she was the one who actually sowed this seed where we are today after 13 long years. Thank you so much, madam, if you're watching out there. Heading out towards a short break, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome back to World This Morning and we are sharing exciting news with you here. Uh, we had been talking about mental health as well. Now we're going to talk about nanosensors who have emerged as a promising technology for the diagnosis and treatment of various diseases. These tiny sensors leverage the unique properties of nanomaterials to detect and analyze biomarkers, enabling early and accurate disease detection as well as a targeted treatment wow. as well. I mean, well. imagine the kind of evolution that we're going to experience but not just that, imagine that a 1975 dime without the San Francisco Mint's S Mint Bar had been sold at an auction for half a million dollars. Well, that's, oh. that's a lot of money for the only two coins known to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, they came down from the brother to the three sisters as well. And it was purchased for $18,200 in 1978, which respectively would be a half a million dollar in today's time. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think it was a great news. We should have one of these coins as well. Exactly. And now I have another news where the ring lost 47 years ago has been found again. Imagine losing something and then finding it back after such well, a like long time and you have lost... Propose oh. karra, oh, no <laughs> What's the point of getting the same ring back? Yeah. Uh, if, if the love was true, they would have gotten married. <laughs> Either way, even without uh, a ring as well. So, exactly. in 1977, uh, Morgan Piergo's uh, class ring slipped into the sea of Barbados and lost forever. And, uh, so, or maybe so he thought. And then decades later, a free diver's metal detector uncovered the treasure and a remarkable journey began and they found it back wow. again. I mean, which is why I don't believe in rings, you know, they get lost, you know. So, I think we should probably give some property or something of that sort to your loved ones. I think that's more appreciated in our part of the world. 
But very quickly, sir, I think what we really need to talk about today, because it happens to be Friday today as well, we do know how Hazrat Alama Muhammad Iqbal Sahib happens to be the torchbearer of Islam and there are three pivotal points of his life where he's been the interpreter of Quran, the diagnosis of the weaknesses of Muslim Ummah and the philosopher that he was. We're going to speak about it and we have a very legitimate guest to speak about it as well. So we're very lucky that we've been joined by my favorite, my Ustaji, Dr. Aslam Khaki Sahib. Assalamu sir. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum, how are you? Assalamu Fine. How are you? So let's get started. After, you know, we don't ask you questions. You know, so please, please go please, ahead. Sir. Allama Iqbal, torch bearer of Islam. <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It would take days and days to talk about Allama Iqbal and his services for Islam as well as for the society. However, we can confine his role into three main roles. Sir. Number one, as interpreter of Quran. And number two, as a reformer of the Muslim Ummah. And number third was his intellectual and genius activity as a scholar. So, as far as the first role is concerned, definitely when we read his poetry, and at the same time I read Quran because I am related with them both as far as my teaching and research is concerned. Few examples only. Quran says, Inna Allah la ma bi hatta ma bi anfusihim. That God does not change the fate of any nation until as they change it themselves. Iqbal just translated into his words, uh, mm. rightly and with the words. Khuda ne aaj tak is qawm ki halat nahi badli. No ho jisko khayal aap apni halat ke badalne ka. And <coughs> at other occasion, when the Muslims asked the Holy Prophet وسلم, in some particular financial crisis, that what should they spend in the way of Allah? Quran replied, yasalluna ka maza yunfiqun qulil afr. The people asked you, what should they spend? Tell them what is surplus from your needs. So Iqbal in that situation, in his own era, he said that now the situation has came because the poverty is there and there is intense poverty. We should act upon this. And he said, Similarly, at many occasions, when Quran says, In kuntum Allah that if you want to love me, Allah says, then follow the Holy Prophet. Sir, in addition to this, there's one thing which I wanted to ask. You know, just to clear my own mindset. Oh, and welcome. my memory cannot recall it that, you know, that it was a Quranic verses translation or whether it was a, a hadith. But what I certainly did uh, understand in, in that context was that there's some, but, uh, somewhere mentioned probably in Quran that or de tum in shairon ke piche mat lag jaya karo mm. you know so you know while we are talking about dr lama muhammad iqbal mm. you know he obviously happens to be a poet mm. you know shair mashhur how do you entail that in the particular shura which just based their shairi on the basis of ghulb ghulb means just exaggeration that's why quran says wa ma allamna hushar wa ma yanbaghi la that we would, didn't teach the holy prophet the poetry because it is not suitable for him. Exactly. What Shura of Humul Ghabun Quran said that the poets are sometimes, they are just astray. So it is for the particular, a specific situation of specific Shura. Okay. So it is like a sword, we can say, that when you use the pistol or any weapon against the good people and against the evil yeah, people, okay. for the good purpose and for the bad purpose. So yeah. it is a so it is a tool, instrument, and a weapon. And that's where the entire the Muslim Ummah actually kind of gets haywired. Nah? You know, yeah. this, is, this is why we get haywired. You know, so <coughs> where he speak about the diagnosis of weaknesses of Muslim Ummah, how do you think we really need to kind of learn and kind of get together and making sure that, okay, what he's actually written about are weaknesses, uh, yeah. are the true he weaknesses highlighted? The, and diagnosed the weaknesses of the Muslim Ummah. That was they were getting away from the teachings of Quran and particularly they were following the West without going into their qualities or bad qualities, just following blind follow. Particularly mm. was that they just conceived their millet on the basis of territory. Mm. Then he said that you should not khas hai Turkey mein qawme rasool hashmi apni millet par qiyas akwaam maghrib se na kar. That we should not follow the mm. basis of the nation, uh, state or vision of your nation like the western so but post colonialism kya karenge yeah but th this you can differ with it that according to the change in the circumstances we have to blend the both yeah mm. so in that sira then he again says ke, and then about the unity ke neel ke sahil se lekar tabakha ke kashgar ek muslim hu haram ki pasbani ke liye mm. 
اینڈ سملرلی کبھی اے نوجوان مسلم تدبر بھی کیا تو نے وہ کیا گردو تھا تو جس کا ہے ایک ٹوٹا ہوا تھا رہی از ریکالنگ دا پاسٹ آف از اینڈ سسٹرس اینڈ ہی سیز دیٹ دے ور دا پریکٹیکل مین کہ تو گفتار وہ کردار تو ثابت وہ سیارہ سو اگین ہی از جسٹ ڈائگنوزنگ دا ویکنسز دیٹ یو آر ناٹ پریکٹیکل یو آر آلویز گوئنگ ود دا کانسیپچوئل تھنگ So he again, basically diagnosed all the weaknesses. Yeah. He woke up the Muslims of the subcontinent. Yeah. Do we need him now before, like, you know, like more than ever? Yeah, because the, diagnose, the uh, weaknesses which he has diagnosed still exist, whether they are exaggerated now in this age. There is that we are just in the uh, diversity, we are in the conflict. in the diversity we are not unity within the diversity but the conflict within the diversity even conflict within the unity conflict within the muslims conflict within the sex so all that though his call for the unity that ek hu muslim haram ki pasbani ke liye that is the you can say we should just go away that and just act upon his call and again what he says is that you all should yes follow the unity of and we should cross the barriers when he says that ek hum muslim haram ki pas and then when he says that ke na turani rahe baki na afghani na irani so that he say that butane rango bu ko tod kar millat mein gum ho ja you should cross the barriers of race color and all that thank you so much doctor thank you so much doctor for being with us lovely to be in conversation with you and for everybody who's out there they was the best day for sada because he got to co-host the show with me oh yeah and it was the best day for you as well thank you so much sada because you got the same for being a wonderful co-host and for everybody who's out there ladies and gentlemen look after yourselves 1 2 3 good morning have a great day juma mubarak thank you so much doctor thank you for